Um, let me pull up my notes here. Um, but yeah, we were we had like our structure of how we wanted to go over this. So um, I think we'll just I'm going to probably show all of this just so that people can see the realism of this and make sure that, you know, we're all doing this together. You and I are, are starting this together. Yeah. And um, yeah, totally. I, I like that idea because <laughs> you're right on the same wave, wavelength. You know, we talked about, um, you know, outwitting the devil. That was our first conversation, right? Mm -hmm. That was probably like, what, three years ago? I know I was in Vegas. Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah, three years ago, right around when I moved to California. Because cause I've been in a few states doing solar, just kind of like you have. So California was my fifth state um, in in solar. And uh, yeah, we we kind of connected because I posted some stuff about outwitting the devil and then you kind of said wow like i love that i love that book it's like the best ever and we kind of had a call about it and i guess for for those people that don't know about this book we should we should give them a little background because i think it'll it'll help them to understand more of the backstory and like more about what a mastermind is because he kind of goes into into depth in all of his books about right. like what is a mastermind how does it work um so yeah do you want you want me to tell him a little bit about the book yeah i'd love to i mean i the reason why i want to do this mastermind to begin with is because when i first went out to boston massachusetts in 2017 i um I didn't know anything about door to door sales and I was kind of like, okay with where I was at. Like I was making 30, 40 grand a year. My wife was just getting out of college. She was going to become a teacher. She was teaching and we probably combined would make up over a hundred grand um, comfortably, right? Working 40 hours sure. a week. And that was way more money than my family ever made. So I didn't think above that number. It was really hard for me um, because like if I made more than my dad, I felt like I'm like outdoing him type of thing. It, I, I couldn't break past that. So, so reading this book on the way from uh, Utah to Boston, Massachusetts to start knocking doors with them at Solar, that was my first experience. Somebody told me, I think Chris Gallagher, he's like, hey, or maybe it was uh, James. James, uh, he, one of the guys that we worked with uh, doing sales in Utah. And um, they were like, hey, you should read this book. We read that book on the way over. And it was 30, I think it's like a 36 hour drive across the country. And me and yeah. my roommate, Nate, we were listening to it. And we're like, holy cow, this is crazy. Like, why, why don't we know this? <laughs> like, right. no, nobody teaches this? Like, what's going on? And, and it just made so much sense, um, that book. And then the experiences that I had after it, um, kind of changed my life because it showed me what was possible with the correct mindset because what you do and what we do where we're creating something out of nothing you know whether it's door knocking or referrals it's uh it kind of seems unbelievable to a lot of people totally you know um that it's possible that we can go out and write our own paycheck essentially um so i feel like us having a mastermind and then letting people come in and see what's possible and what we're doing, what our, our think patterns are like, that will help a lot of people. Cause I know it's helping. Totally. Yeah. And you know, about outwitting the devil. So I found that book back in 2012. Okay. I, I honestly just stumbled upon it. Um, a year was after it was published. released in 2011. Yeah. It was a year after it was published. I was in a networking group in Denver which is where I first started doing solar back in 2011, 2012. And um, I was in, no, it was 2013. I started doing solar January, 2013, but I found this book in 2012. I was still, I was doing sales and uh, basically was in some networking groups. And it was, it was crazy because I stumbled upon this book. It was written back in the, 20s it was written in like 1925 
1927, something like that. And then it was hidden away for 70 years because Napoleon Hill's wife was like, hey, the world's not ready for this. Don't release it. It's too controversial. It's just too much. And so it literally sat in a vault with the Napoleon Hill Foundation for 70 years. And, you know, after he died, after his wife died, and after like a couple of their kids or something died, they, the foundation said, let's release it. And so it's like this hidden gem. It's as good as his other book, Think and Grow Rich. I think it's better. And it's just, it's this conversation that he has with, with the devil where he basically makes the devil give up all of his tricks and you know, how he distracts people, how he keeps people from achieving their goals, how he uh, demotivates people. And the book just is so rich in content. And, you know, I remember reading it the first time I like, you know, I, I found it on audiobook and then, and then listened to it once. And then I read it. And then like a month later, I went through it again. And it's become this book that I I probably read one or two times a year, if not more than that. And I just continue to go back to it because it just helps you understand how important positivity is, how important surrounding yourself with the right people is. uh, And then, you know, really how important our mind is and, you know, keeping our mind protected from negativity and distraction. Right. Yeah. And that's, uh, I would say being able to bring this to people in this way and like, it's just a conversation and people want us like watching on this. Um, it's going to help a lot of people cause they're going to open up, they're going to look at things differently and they're going to start reading these books because they're like, okay, if these guys are doing it, they must be doing something right essentially. So yeah. it's, uh, it's a good, it's a good setup. So, um, I would say we can kind of look over this, but um, I first want to like introduce you a little bit. So you've been in industry for, uh, you said since 2012 and Mm -hmm. you've been with the same company the whole time. No, I, I've been, I've been with about four solar companies. I started with solar city and then basically I was with them for a few years I moved to New York uh, from Colorado uh, doing solar. And then basically after that was with a, another solar company in, in New York, uh, lived in Long Island doing it and, uh, and then moved to Texas. And then that's when solar city went out of business. And so I was, I was with solar city in Texas and then I ended up taking you know, a, a job in Arizona for um, just like a summer. It was only about four months, but I did and I did door to door solar in a with a, a dealer. And then uh, after that is when I kind of ran into uh, the VP of Vivint Solar and uh, was brought on here in California. So, you know, so I've been with Vivint Solar for about three and a half years. And then, yeah, what overall, kind of, yeah. What kind of numbers is like an average week for for a sales team out there? Like, are you guys have a quite a good sized sales team usually with Vivint? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So Vivint Solar just got bought by Sunrun, and so that that whole merger just happened. But you know, there's right. there's quite a few. There's I think sixty offices, fifty offices nationally, and. Yeah. Uh, and our team in, in Riverside is one of the top producing offices. So we'll, we'll do about 300 installs uh, a quarter. Okay. So, oh. yeah. So, so that's, that's what our team is doing. And then me personally, I do between probably 60 and 80, 60 and a hundred installs a year. So I'm, I'm at almost 600 installs uh, in seven years. Okay, so wow. that's awesome. So yeah, you're pretty consistent there. You're like, yeah, I've, I've been consistent, even with like the changing companies and all that stuff. You know, I, I am typically doing about 10, 10 closed deals uh, a month. And then, you know, I, I'm usually installing uh, typically 80, 90 installs. And then my, my biggest year was 97. 
So okay. I haven't broke a hundred yet, but okay. gonna Is break that... it this year. <laughs> this year you're gonna do it, you said? Yeah, for sure. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Get into a little bit about. Uh, I know we wanted to kind of stay on a structure here, so let's get in a little bit on what you're doing for uh, your referrals. Because uh, I know you, if you want to, we can uh, reference uh, the Sam Taggart one uh, so that people can listen to that. But sure. I, you know, I listened to to it, and it was a there was a lot of gold nuggets in there. And if if I could break that down and like write it down into like a structure where I could see it on paper i think uh that'll be helpful for us uh, quite quite a bit you know as far as like what you're doing and maybe how you go about this so my question is uh from your referral standpoint it sounds like you get you have to have a base first right of people that you're going to get referrals from so you can't just start from you have to have have a few to get started at least you know five or ten but you don't have to have a hundred people okay. just just so that people know like you don't have to have start it right huge, away so right. if you're starting in the industry and you get five or ten people like that you went out and worked hard for on the doors or whatever you got maybe you bought leads yeah. or or whatever and now you have somebody that is there and they're they're actually ready to move forward on that side so what do you what's your input on that yeah, so so basically the biggest thing about referrals is you, you need to have a you need to have a clear plan and and something that is an organized structure that you're putting in front of people. Because okay. let, let me tell you the reason why most people don't get referrals. The main reason is because first of all, they don't focus on it. They don't have a plan. They don't have something that is intriguing to people that they even want to take their time to, you know, to work with you on. So it's more like, you know, they've, they've got this, this thing that, you, you know, you'll get some money if, if you send over a referral here or there and, you know, it's kind of, it's just nice extra cash. That's how most people think of it. And then they're like, I got a referral. It's a miracle. Right. And, and so most people do not plan on getting referrals. That's the biggest reason why the average person in sales, not just in solar, but in sales does not get referrals. And, you know, you hear where they say, well, you need to ask for referrals to get referrals. That's, that's like half of it. I, I honestly don't believe that that is the main way to get referrals is asking for referrals because there's a lot more that goes into it. You need to have a structure that people can get behind and that they trust you. You know, so so let me let me give you a couple examples. When it comes to generating new business and referrals, number one, you need to understand that not everyone is going to be a key player. That's just how it is. Most customers are not good salespeople. Most customers are not going to be good at explaining the program to someone else and it's sending you a qualified solid lead. Right. And so you, you got to understand that you're probably talking about five to 10% of the people that you meet with or work with are going to be good at giving you referrals. So, so number one, you're going to have to coach people. You're going to have to explain how to explain it. <laughs> you're going to have to teach them how to properly sell the program and get you in front of people and send you over qualified numbers and referrals. Uh, That's the first part of it. And then the second part is to understand that not everyone, even that you coach and teach on this, is going to be excited to work with you or even good at working with you. So, so I I think it's kind of like the 80-20 rule, you know, out of you kind of pick the people you want to focus more on, like, cause you like yeah. them a little bit more and they're more fit your style. So it's not even about style. It's more about like just how excited they are about the program. So, so there's a couple ways that you can learn about this because when it comes to like getting referrals, everyone is always like, well, where do I even start? You right. start with having a plan and a program and, and I'll tell you kind of an example of what that structure would look like. And then on top of that, 
you start by planting seeds and weaving referrals into your appointment, into your presentation, into your sit down, into everything that you do. You weave referrals into that where people are able to literally uh, understand that, whoa, this guy does a lot of referrals. He, he gets a lot of his business this way. And so if they can understand that, that's going to be, that's going to be key. I don't, so, so like I said about asking for referrals, personally, I don't really ask for referrals hardly ever because I do such a good job of planting seeds and weaving this into my presentation, I will literally mention referrals 20, 30 times in, in my appointment. The first thing that I say, I'll, I'll, I'll give a couple one-liners. The first thing that I say when I meet with someone is, hey, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you sitting down and taking a look at this. My goal is that you, you like working with me, that I'm able to explain everything clearly, and that you like this enough that you'd be willing to introduce me to everyone that you know, because I do have a really great referral program that would give you actually the opportunity to not just, you know, make a little bit of extra money, but even pay for all of your power bills for the next coming years. You know, that's, that's how much money there is in, you know, talking to people about this. And so if you like what you see, that's my goal is that you like me and, and you trust me enough that we can start working with other people that you know. Okay. It's like almost first thing that I'm doing when I'm sitting down with them. So I'm, I'm framing it. I'm pre-framing this where I'm saying, hey, I run a referral business and I would love to work with you on that side. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more as we go. Right. Which, uh, I mean, and like you say, you can kind of place it in this into any scenario, right? So same, same thing if you're going after another company, like if it's a roofing company or an AC company or something like that. Totally. If you make friends with those people and you could do a referral program like this, where you could show them the possibilities and you have a structure of doing it. Uh, it, it takes a little bit to set up the structure, right? So like having the right things in place as far as having visual, visual, visualizations of what it's going to look like as far as if they get this many referrals or this many referrals, what prizes or things that they could. Right. Exactly. So, so like for instance, um, an example of structure with referrals is, is first off. So there's, there's two sides of it. There's your own structure and organization of how you handle referrals Right. And then there's the structure of explaining it to a client so that they're excited to work with you. Because I'll just, I'll just tell you, it's not an exciting program to just get paid a hundred bucks or 200 bucks or a gift card or $500 per referral. Like that's, that's every company, every single sales company out there is going to pay a referral fee because referral business is, is easier business. So that's not something that's exciting that like gets people motivated to, to work with you and to okay. send you business. But it's if you can sort of like feeling behind it, it's not just like a dollar amount. It's like a, an event or uh, something that they could well, use. Well, well, this is the thing. The reason why people wouldn't send you a referral is because they don't trust you yet. Right. right. And so they don't trust you to go and talk to their mom because they don't know how you're going to take care of their mom in this whole situation because you just met them, right? You're sitting, you're sitting down with them fresh. You are a new person to them and they have no idea who you are, right? right? And so the biggest thing that a structure does is that it gives you more credibility quicker and it builds that fruit on the tree that people can see. And so it's like, they're gonna wanna work with you because you've worked with other people and because they trust that you're going to be able to take care of the people that you send that they send to you because if if they don't trust you you're not going to get referrals it, you're right. just you're just not and so what are some key things that you do to build trust do you feel like that sets you apart that would potentially something that i could add you know the, the biggest thing is is being authentic and being real with people I think right. honestly is, is the key is in your appointment, you, you put down the sales hat, you put down your guard 
and you say, hey, l- let me be real with you. You know, I, I know that you've probably had experiences with other salespeople where something happened that they didn't they didn't stand by what they said or something like that. And I just want to tell you that I, you know, I'm serious about what I do. I'm serious about my job. And, uh, you know, I run a referral business and it keeps me really honest because every person that I work with is someone that I want to continually work with long term. Right. And so I don't want to just get you signed up today and then never talk to you again. I want to get us started. If this makes sense, if, if it looks good and, and we decide that we want to move forward with this, I want to get us started and then help, you know, five, 10, 20 of your friends over the next few years, over the next three to five years to also get set up with this. And I have a really cool program around that, which would actually, you know, be a huge a huge extra bonus for you where, you know, I pay pretty good money for, for those referrals, uh, down the road. And so, you know, and then this is the biggest way to build trust. You tell stories, you tell firsthand experiences, you talk about Dion, you know, this is one of my customers, Dion, he was super skeptical before he got set up and, and after everything was all done, he decided to introduce me to a couple neighbors. We got three of his neighbors set up and I paid him for each of those referrals. And after that, he sent me to like five or six of his family members. He sent me to his aunt, his mom, his sister, uh, a a brother-in-law. He sent me to, uh, you know, five or six different people. And now, you know, he's, he's only a couple referrals away from, you know, getting a, a paid vacation from me for you know for how my referral program works so now they're like whoa okay that's that's kind of different that's kind of cool and then i back it up with the spreadsheet so i have a personal assistant who handles my referral business and basically she manages the spreadsheets all of my customers that have sent me over five referrals get their own spreadsheet and i share it with them it's something, so this is the back end part that I was talking about. This is how you yourself are organized and can handle if someone gives you 20 referrals, it's not going to overwhelm you. It's not going to be something that you can't handle that. And then you lose the trust of that person who sent you 20 referrals, right? Yeah. This is the organization, the back end, the back end side where you have an organized structure. And so I literally have. So basically, you know, I have this structure, this uh, you know, organization behind my referral program. So I'll open up 10 spreadsheets and show them. And it's not like, it's not like, hey, look at all the people I'm working with. It's every single person that I'm showing them, I'm telling a story about it. And then I'm opening up the spreadsheet and saying, yeah, so, so this is Dion. He sent me about 12 people over the past two years. And we've already had seven of them that decided to do it and got installed, right? And and I have it in my iPad that they're looking at. And then I'll open up like three or four others and just tell them stories about what's going on with each of those clients. And I'll say, yeah, this is Cynthia. Cynthia, she was also, just like you, pretty skeptical in the beginning. And it, it took her a while to actually move forward with this. But once she did it, you know, she had a number of neighbors that did it. She sent me XXX. She's she's a mortgage broker and basically just knows a bunch of people because she's, you know, closing on these loans pretty often. So she sent me to about 15 of her clients in the past couple of years. And this is her list. And then I open it up and she they see 26 names and they're like, oh, wow. OK, so this guy's working with people. So it right. builds that credibility where I don't have to create credibility some other way i i have instant trust because i'm showing them these stories and it's just it's too elaborate to make up it's almost like one of those things that people are very skeptical and they've got like a pretty high bs meter but when you have all this extra things and you're doing it naturally so it doesn't feel scripted then they're they're looking at it and they're like oh wow okay cool and then you keep telling a couple more stories and you know for me i'll i'll, I'll tell about someone that made over ten thousand dollars in a year working with me 
in referrals. Okay. You know? And so I'll so, tell them that story and then I'll show them in person. in the spreadsheet. Say, say that one more time. What What's the most uh, referrals you've gotten from one person? In solar, it's it's been it's been over sixty from one person. Wow. Holy cow! Yeah, but you know, I I think I got like forty of them installed, something like that. So what uh, do you what do you have plans for that many? Like, do you get up that high, or do you like reset people? Uh, not not often. <laughs> that's okay. that's been my my top. I I've had a number of people that have sent me thirty, twenty five, forty, something like that, and that's kind of just consistent over time. But like right. that person that was in the 60s, 70s, um, and, and we installed a lot. I was I was literally just, I was just buying him random stuff like every single month because almost all my business was coming from, you know, a, a few people and, and him being my main person. How's that relationship? Is that a pretty good relationship still? <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a great relationship. And, and, th and this is the thing, like people, they they want to feel significant. They want to have respect. They want like all of these, these things that you as a salesman, most of the time, they're not going to let you in. They're right. just not going to trust you enough. They're not going to lower the, the, their guard and drop the wall. Yep. Unless you have a way of connecting with them on a deeper level, which is which is really the that's the art of sales that's the art of selling is to be able to connect with people help you know help get them on your side help persuade them to understanding what it is that you're you're offering right and so i'll i'll give you another another little nugget um that that i use and and it's when i'm working with someone i'll pretty quickly determine if they're going to be a player or not and so i have i have what i call my a team and my a team is my top referral partners that have sent me business and we've gotten 5 10 15 installs from that one person and i am treating them like a, a king or a queen you know i'm dropping off new nike gear i'm surprising them with new extra bonuses you know, just just whatever it is that I can do to make them feel special and to make them feel a part of something, that's that's the key of really generating a long term referral relationship. Because, you know, but it took me a while to get there, right? Not everyone is going to be there right away. You kind of have to plant the seeds with everyone and then see who who wants to work with you. You have to like put enough out there and so so I'll, I'll give you my example for me it's a vacation i love to travel i now it doesn't have to be this for everyone i'm not saying that you have to do this as, as part of your referral program but i found that something like this works something that people can work towards that they are excited about so what i do is in my in my initial discovery where i'm getting to know them I'll kind of ask them about vacations. I'll look at pictures on the wall. I'll say, hey, I saw a picture there. Like, where was that at? It looked like it was kind of a cool destination. They'll say, oh yeah, no, that was in the Bahamas. Oh, that's amazing. Like, tell me about that trip. And, and then I'll just kind of have them keep talking about it. And then I'll say, let me ask you a question. What is your favorite vacation you've ever been on? What's the best trip that you've ever been on in your whole life? And now, they're, they're talking about it. And guess what's happening as they are talking about it? Uh, they're kind of selling themselves on the idea of they want to go on another trip. They are going back to that place. <laughs> they're literally visualizing <laughs> being in that location. I'm, right. I'm tapping into something that is very personal. I'm tapping into something that they maybe don't share with everyone. And, and they're opening up because I asked and because it's well, a very trips, innocent. Uh, trips bring emotion and, and they're explaining the emotion, right? And it brings them back to that emotion that they enjoyed. Exactly. Exactly. So like, for instance, one of my customers, her name was Janice. She told me about this amazing trip that they had in Italy. And she went into detail. She was like talking about it for five, 10 minutes. 
it was like, it was a big part of my, my sales presentation. It was a big part of what we were doing, talking about this. And then after I'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk about one of my favorite trips or something that, that kind of keeps that energy going. And then I'll say, do you want to know what? One of my favorite things about my job is that I'm able to, to be a blessing in other people's lives. And I have a referral program. Now, now this isn't for everyone. Not everyone is going to work with me. Not everyone is going to send me a bunch of people to, to talk to, but some people will. And, and what I do is if we can work with 10 people, if we can, if we can help 10 people switch to solar, then I'm going to buy you uh, a dream vacation and I'm going to help make that happen. What's where, where would you love to go next? What's on your list? What's the next destination that you are excited to go to that like either it's just been maybe a little bit too much or you just had put it off and, and you haven't been able to go there. And, and this lady, she says, I have always wanted to go to, to Greece and Santorini. And I've always wanted to see that beautiful coastline with those white, those white homes and, and just, it's gorgeous. I've always wanted to go there and we just haven't, we've talked about it for years, but we just right. haven't been able to do it. And then I'll say, what if I could help you to get there? What if we could work together over the next year or two? We can do it sooner. I, I, no limits. If you want to do it like this month or next month, let's, let's work. Let's, let's do it together. But most people, it's going to be kind of slow and steady. We'll work with one, two, three people a month. And, and, and it'll just be over time that we'll get to those the helping 10 of your neighbors, friends, family, whoever uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. Um, but one of the things that, that I love is, you know, if you're an overachiever, let's start working now. Like, if you send 20 people to me, I'll, I'll meet with them in the next month, right? It's, there's, there's no limits on that. And, and most of my business comes from referrals. So I set my own schedule. I set my own hours. I, I can work when you, when, when you send people over to me and, and I will take care of them and treat them like gold. Right. And so now what has just happened? And, and this is like me giving away my secrets, right? Um, yeah. And, and Napoleon Hill talks about it. He talks about in the law of success, there's also a law of, of reciprocation. And right. whatever you give comes back to you in equal measure. And, exactly. you know, this is, this is something that I'm openly sharing because I want people to win. I want people to have success in everything that they're doing. And, you know, especially in solar where there's so much abundance around us, if, if this little tip this little technique works for someone then it would make me incredibly happy if if i can enhance someone's business and help get them to that next level that they right. want to be at and yeah that's and we didn't hit too much on that in the beginning but yeah that's like going to be our main focus on this right we, we talked about that prior um as far as you're kind of setting the tempo for this right <laughs> the all this the free value that you're giving away here and, and me being able to ask you questions about it is cool, right? So we're just uh, very grateful that you're here, part of this. And, um, you know, like you say, the idea is, is we, the more we give, the more we get back. Um, and we believe that, right? And we have that abundance mindset. And that's something that's uh, taught in these books. Well, when you, so when I, you actually think about what's made you happy in life, when you actually think about it, I, I bet that right. most of that is is experiences and, and things that you've given, uh, you know, gifts that you've given, experiences that you've had, things that you, you know, especially if you've ever done any charity work, if you've worked in orphanages, if you've gone and traveled abroad and helped, you know, build a village or a hospital or, or anything like that, like those experiences shape people. My, my crucible right. was I, I was a missionary for two years and I gave two years of my life in service to God and that shaped me. It, it was a refiner's fire for me. It really set the stage of who I wanted to be and giving that service and being a full-time missionary for two years was, was a huge uh, sacrifice in my life at that time. And, you know, right. I, 
got so much back in return for that experience, way more than I gave, even in the years of service and in the hours and, and all of that, like, so, so I think that when people think back, you're always happier when you're giving and, you know, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. I have a Tony Robbins coach and I've been to a lot of his events. And, and one thing that he always says is the secret to life. The secret to living is giving. And that's secret to living is giving. I believe that. Yeah, the, secret. the secret to living that, is what, giving. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, so the scarcity mindset is that there's not enough. And that, uh, you know, if, if you're taking it or if you know my secret, then essentially there's not enough for me to keep going, right? That's a scarcity yep. mindset. And the abundant mindset is being able to think that there's more than, than, than enough. There's no way that I could ever get to all of these houses. <laughs> like you, you're driving or you're flying above all these houses and you look down and it's like, and what's the percentage of homes that are covered in, in solar? It, even in California, it's like less than 20%. Yeah, like 15%. 15%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, and we've been going at it for how many years? Like, and we're just at right. that. For, right. It's past the early adopter phase, but that's only in California. Like the early adopter phase, as they say, is the first 10%. And then after that, people start coming on a little bit quicker now. You don't have to convince people that solar works there in California. Right, because pe- their yeah. neighbors have, have had it for eight years, and they've obviously still have it, it's still working. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's further along. Like I've been in eleven different markets, and you've been in many different markets too. And it's like every area, it's it's a different percentage, but we're such on the early portion of it that having masterminds yeah, there's like so much. There's so much room. There's so much room to grow, and. And that's, that's something that I, I truly believe in is that if you can help people to win in life, you will win yourself. And that's why my whole program is all centered around helping people to win, helping people to have that experience, helping people. I've, I've helped about seven, seven different clients since I've, uh, you know, the past five years, really. I've helped seven different clients to have this vacation experience and, you know, 70 installs from seven people. That's, that's pretty good. And it's actually even more than that from, because not all of them just ended at 10, they're still going. Right. And so, so that's just something that I've noticed works is if you can build something up, maybe it's something that they want to do on their house. Maybe it's something else. And I'll, I'll tell people, Hey, you know, I'm going to write you a check for $4,000. You know, that's, that's what, that's the, the portion that, that I'll be able to contribute towards this, this dream vacation. That's a pretty amazing vacation for two people, right? If you bring the whole family, not going to cover quite as much of it, you'll probably have to pay a little yourself. Um, And then depending on how long you go, but you know, if you wanted to take that $4,000, do something else with it, what, whatever you want, whatever gets you excited. But the reason why I like it to be a vacation is because you're, you're always going to remember that. And everyone needs a vacation at least once a year <laughs> because right. it just they makes life back, better. If they, when they come back with all their pictures, they can always have that emotion. They can look back on it and always think about, I was able to take that because of solar and and how is that possible? Like we're able to give away solar. We're able to put up solar at no cost for homeowners. I say give away, obviously not, not, we're not giving it away, but, but essentially when somebody told me about going to the East coast and doing solar with the power purchase agreements, yeah. I, I was like, wait, so there's no cost. We put them up at no cost and uh, the solar company owns it. They operate it. They maintain it, insure it if it breaks down they come and fix it and that homeowner is saving money i know it's hard to believe that's how i was too when i started (laughs) wait what why is not why doesn't everybody have this on their house like i can't believe this exactly because i don't know about it so i'll 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 share something for those who are 
into, you know, um, athletics and stuff. So I also uh, have another coach who is my Ironman coach. And uh, I just ran my first Ironman in November. So that's kind of been a new progress in my life where I've been training for triathlons. And so I'm working with Iron Cowboy. Uh, and he, oh, wow. yeah, so he's, so he's my Ironman coach. And, um, you know, he's been helping me. He helped me to do my first Ironman. Uh, I trained for a full year. All of 2020, I was training for my Ironman that I did in November, uh, right before Thanksgiving. Wow. Okay. And where did you do that? I did it in Mexico, uh, okay. in Cozumel. Yeah. So I did it in Cozumel, Mexico. So and, for those uh, that know, that's what, what was the, the it is swimming, biking and running. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a full Ironman. So it's a 2.4 mile swim followed by a 112 mile bike ride followed by a 26 mile marathon. So it's pretty intense. Wow. And so you, you've been training really hard for that for like, a, uh, how long did it take you to get to that point? Um, I trained for over a year. I, I would say I was in training for two years. Uh, my training was kind of more intense at different stages. The last six months before the Ironman were, were hard, like, uh, okay. were very intensive 15, 20 hours a week of training. Um, right. so I was doing some days, three, four hours a day, uh, day and night, morning run, evening bike ride, morning swim, evening run. Like I was, I was doing a lot of two days and it, it, it was pretty intense, uh, right before it happened. But I just, I say that because yeah, maybe talking about mentality, mindset, mental toughness, um, that was something that when I accomplished the Ironman and it took me. 13 and a half hours, um, which for your first Ironman is actually a pretty decent time. I was shooting for a 12 hour Ironman, but I wasn't able to do it just with my training and everything. So I'm still training. I'm doing another Ironman in about six months. And uh, so I'm still training with uh, Iron Cowboy and he's doing something crazy. If, if you aren't aware, like, so he's doing a hundred Ironmans in a hundred days this spring so iron cowboy i i know i know i've heard the name i know that very popular in the iron man then is that is that what it yep. is then? okay yeah, check him out iron cowboy james and okay. uh he set a world record in 2016 and he did 50 iron mans in 50 days in 50 states and he set that world record um and basically they they made a documentary if you look it up on Amazon, on Amazon, uh, it, you just type in Iron Cowboy and you can watch a documentary about it. It's pretty incredible. So Is he's doing another. Iron Pro Ed? Yeah, Iron, Iron Cowboy. Cool. Perfect. And so anyways, that's just, that's something we didn't even touch on that. But like on the physical side, like right now I'm in the best shape of my life. And, you know, I've. In the past uh, three years, I've lost almost 30 pounds. Not, not in a bad way, but just you know, I I wasn't happy with where I was at uh, three four years ago, and I just made some decisions. I started running. I started doing marathons. I started kind of changing my life, and now I'm kind of into triathlons. And so, so that's like part of it is the balance in your life, right? Like, right. you know, you work out, you exercise that gives you a better day. It gives you more energy. It gives you a better mentality. And, you know, so, so like that, that's a whole nother side of this, you know, to be a top producer and a top salesman, you have to have balance in your life in, in other areas too, you know? And so that's like something else that we could maybe dive into a little bit more, but yeah, you know, no. I feel like, I feel like there's so much that we could, go over there's so much that we could cover and so this is just kind of the intro call and then we'll have you know tons of other people that will be interviewed and and share what's working for them and then like I said I I think a good practice will be for those people that like certain things like we just keep it very open and you can even message or comment uh right. just hey I really like that could we dive in deeper here or could we you know do a call about like, 
I think that in the mastermind group, if if you connect well with someone and and want to talk about what they talked about and kind of dive deeper, I'm fine with doing a one on one call every once in a while with right. people just to just to like provide value. I, I still have uh, some really close friends from a mastermind I did about two years ago that we do calls every once in a while and we're just we're just good friends and we support each other in life, you know. Yeah, and that's what you need. I feel like a lot of times is just somebody that can help you stay on track. And uh, I think that's where if we could put that into place a little bit into this group where everybody has somebody that they can reach out to in the group. If it's not us, it maybe it's somebody else that's in the group that we're talking with. Because um, everybody's going to be a part of this, this family, essentially. So the tighter we could keep it, the more synergistic we could keep it. We could essentially break that mold of, you know, only being able to have 20 people in a mastermind. What if you could have a hundred people in a mastermind? What kind of power? Right. That? right. Well, and that's, that's the real question. It's, it's one of those things that for it to, to work, like people have to be on the same page. They have to understand, they have to be, you know, selfless and, and, and give value and not just take. Right. Yeah. Um, there's actually, I'll mention, there's this amazing book that I read a, a while ago called Give and Take. Um, I can't remember who wrote it. I want to say the guy's name was Adam or something, but uh, it's it's called Give and Take. And it's about like the difference between givers and takers and, and just kind of, it, it was really good in the concept of understanding how people work. And, um, you know, so that that's, that's a good one for people to read if they right. want to, just understand the benefits of being a giver and then and then they have matchers too so there's givers takers matchers and matchers are like you did this so i'll, I'll do that right and they like trade where as 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 you know and for me i i've kind of learned that that i'm i'm the giver like i will give content i'll give value i'll give without res expecting things back in return and i have received some of my largest sales uh, in referrals because of giving value selflessly. Uh, and I'm thinking about one of my biggest sales, which was like a 37, 38 kilowatt sale or something like that. And I, I, I received that from a referral who ended up not even going solar with me. <laughs> he went with another company and I was fine with it. And we kept in really good touch. And I actually gave him a couple other references that panned out for him and other things that he was doing. And then he gave me this other referral instead of going to his company that he went with because wow. of the trust and because of the giving. So that's just another thing. Like the group isn't about just taking, it's about giving and like understanding that a real mastermind is unity of thought and it's unity in purpose where we can all have the same vision, the same goal of, of what we want for each other. And if everyone can be on the same page there, this is gonna be successful. And right. it's gonna help people providing value. It's going to be something that people will see, you know, what a real community of, of, of selfless people who are in a mastermind alliance means. And, right. and yeah, I, I've only seen it a couple times where it's worked effectively. And yeah. uh, I'm excited for this because I really think that we, we have the structure and we have what it takes to do it. And it's going to be exciting to see how, you know, how many people we can help in 2021 and uh, to, to share and spread that vision. Right. No, yeah, I really appreciate your time. I know uh, you're a busy man. You, you keep your schedule tight because uh, that's how I you keep it pretty full. Cool. <laughs> so that's awesome um but yeah i appreciate all this i'll i'll uh, send you this recording um we're gonna send out templates too as far as just like what we talked about over the last hour um and, and hit on those points so that people can reference those templates potentially and then just without watching the whole hour they don't have to and that way they know what's in that in each one of these masterminds perfect i love that and uh yeah no i think it'll be great and excited to kind of see how the the group gets started and and, and where it goes and how we can help each other Came well in. thanks for having me man 
it's going to be exciting. And uh, I wish everyone success with what they're working towards. And here's to uh, an awesome and prosperous year in 2021. Okay, man, I appreciate you.